Let's take the political compass test. Let's do let's do that next. Let's let's take this compass test. We'll go through this whole thing. All right. So here we go. Let's <laughs> let's go through this, guys. All right. If economic globalism is inevitable, it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interests of transnational corporations. In general, I think that countries and economies should have a person first idea in a way that still promotes economic growth, but not necessarily a way that promotes massive hyper corporations that have the ability to basically buy the world. Um, and so like, you know, I, I agree. I agree. And the reason I'm not strongly agreeing is because again, I think that we can't focus too much on um, the idea of, and I'll say equality. We need to have some form of way to uh, promote people who are, can, contribute to society more having a, more of a say and that is with like some kind of a class structure uh, i'd always support my country whether it was right or wrong this is like uh this is a strongly disagree i am very patriotic i love this country i'm an eagle scout uh both of my my scout master and my assistant scout masters were very patriotic vietnam vets and i learned quite a bit from them um and and i, I give them a great amount of uh i attribute much of who i am today to them <clears throat> but on principle Supporting my country for doing something that I feel is deeply wrong doesn't feel patriotic to me. It feels like it's tainting what our country is, just for the sake of, of laziness. Um, no one chooses his or her own country, his or her country of birth, so it's foolish to be proud of it. I just <laughs> fuck you. No, there's a difference between patriotism and nationalism. You can love where you're from. Like, what is the goal here? Everybody to be a gray, nothing blob? Like, no, you can love where you're from. You can be proud of where you're from. It doesn't matter what country you're from. It doesn't matter if you're from America or the United States or, or Mexico or any country. You can be proud of where you're from as long as it's from a patriotic perspective. There's nothing wrong with putting higher value on yourself from a subjective personal perspective or even necessarily the people uh, in your country as long as you don't allow that to, to seep into this idea that you are inherently superior. And from an objective uh, perspective, our race has many superior qualities compared with other races. <laughs> it's kind of similar to the other thing. This is such like a catch-22. Like, what, a, what, what the fuck does that mean? I think that in context, and the thing is, I can only agree or disagree. Like, I can't say neutral. In context, I believe that overall, every race has something a little bit different to contribute, possibly. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging that. It doesn't mean that I hold higher value on that particular thing. But to say superior, like, I don't understand, like, the wordage of this. Like, this is, it seems like, hey, are you a white nationalist or not? That's what this question feels like. And it's like, if I agree, I'm going to be pushed more to the right. But I do think from a subjective perspective, sure, maybe. I mean, more, I, I maybe a little bit. But it doesn't mean that I think other people are inferior. I think different people have different uh, superior qualities to other people. But not in a way. And like, that's what the beauty of America is. is because we let those qualities shine. So I'm agreeing. I don't care. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Sure. I mean, that's pretty straightforward to me. Military action that defies international law sometimes justified. I'm going to disagree only on the principle that I think that we should follow the rules. Um, there's now a worrying fusion of information and entertainment. Absolutely. You know how boring politics should be? It's insanity. It's honestly insane how boring. The fact of the matter is when I play video games on my stream, I get like... I get like a decent number of viewers. I have five, like five times the number of viewers just because I'm talking about politics. This should be so, so boring. Politics should be so boring. We shouldn't be anywhere near as polarized as we are. And yet we are. And it's like, it's, it's estimated that we're as polarized as we were during the Civil War. It's insane. It shouldn't be this way. There's no reason for it to be like this. All right. People are ultimately divided more by class than nationality. This is such a, this is such a weird question. Because my opinion is, is that, uh, generally speaking, systemic racism has trickled down in a way that has caused black people specifically, but generally people of color, to be at a lower class standing. But the solution is never going to be, uh, to be val it's always going to be valuing people and, and in both empowering people based on their class status. So if, uh, like there's, there's both of these are, are in my opinion, wrong. Um, I would say I agree that they're more divided by class, though, than they are by anything else, especially nowadays. And at the very least, we need to move forward in a way that, that focuses on economic class and economic standing rather than, than specifically race. Um, controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment. I don't... What is... Yeah, probably. I mean, unemployment is generally an irrelevant factor sometimes. I mean, it's 
it's you should track it, but it's not everything. I mean, you could have a 50% unemployment rate that's better than somebody with a 90% unemployment rate because you might have a household with one income earner and somebody else who stays at home. Like, I don't understand. This is a silly question. Unemployment, especially nowadays, is very silly to me. Inflation is very, I'm going to say strongly, it's very important to control. I just don't understand the subtext. Like, what is the subtext here? Um, because corporations cannot be trusted to voluntarily project, protect the environment, they require regulation. I agree with that. Here's the problem is that when we talk about requiring regulation, I think that the government on small projects has failed us uh, in, in, in droves to a point where they're wasting our money. I think the government should be in charge of big policies like healthcare. It shouldn't be in charge of policies like taking money from one state and putting it in another state for education when that's completely, in my opinion, unnecessary and just ignores the real problem of lack of finances to a particular area. So I agree with that, but I'm not going to strongly agree because it's just it's I, I there's a skepticism from the government in this one. From each according to his ability to each according to his need is a fundamentally good idea. I agree with that if I look at it from the perspective of there are haves and there are have nots in society because I do think that as we move forward from a tech for with technology that there are going to be less haves and more have nots and if we want to push forward as a society. Um, that championing that champions more than just pure progress with a ton of suffering attached to it. We need to value people who don't necessarily bring that much value to the table. Um, I think that there needs to be more of an emphasis on, on the human condition and empathy um, moving forward. The freer the market, the freer the people. I'm going to disagree with that. Now, this is a tough one because I believe in free markets. I don't, but I don't believe in the freer the markets, the freer the people. This is a stupid question. Because I would sit in the middle on this one. Because I do believe, I love, I think free market economy is like objectively, well, I guess it would be subjective, right? But I think it's the best way to go. Free markets allow people to be valued. Um, it allows people to value themselves based on their ability to contribute to society. And so that's what I love about free markets. And I really believe capitalism wrapped in like some, some, some good social safety nets. But this question leaves no room for context. I either agree and say free markets are great, or I disagree and I say free markets are shit. It doesn't really give me the freer the market. I'm going to disagree, but, like, with the context of that, like, we need a free market, but, like, we need to have it wrapped in, in social, you know, different social programs. It's a sad reflection on our society that someone as basic as, oh, something as basic as drinking water is now a uh, bottled, branded consumer product. I disagree with this. And the reason I disagree with this is because you can drink your tap water. Go drink the water out of the sink. I did it all the time when I was growing up. Like, you decided to buy bottled water because of what, Flint, Michigan? Like, yeah, that was fucked up. But, like, Flint is actually better now. People don't understand that. People are just very skeptical. I get it. But, like, you know, you don't have to buy bottled water. You really don't have to. It's more, you know, you don't have to. Um, land shouldn't be a commodity. It should be to be bought and sold. Ah. I disagree with this one. This this is the thing. Is people make this argument that like, you shouldn't be able to buy and sell land. I don't know how. I understand like that maybe we should consider. I would love to have the conversation about whether we should have the ability to buy and sell land. Um, maybe we should. Maybe we shouldn't. I don't think there's an issue with owning some kind of property so that you can retire on it. Um, but, like, that's something that doesn't need to be solved right now. It really doesn't. Like, I understand there's people that can live and die on not having to do anything because they own land. But, like, overall, our issue isn't really with land ownership right now. It's really with an improper distribution of wealth in the United States. Duh. Excuse me. It is regrettable that many personal fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing to their society. Sure, I agree. The problem is, is that like they, 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 I don't know, they bundled everybody together. But like, no, I agree with that because my, the principle, in my opinion, of the United States is the idea that if you work hard, you can get more things. And when you have people who don't have to work hard and they get things, how exactly does that contribute whatsoever to what, to what America stands for? I'm okay with generational wealth, but I do think it's getting out of control. Uh, protectionism is sometimes a necessary in trade. I don't know what, that's kind of, we're going to Google this word because I don't quite understand what we're talking about. Uh, theory of parents shielding in the country's domestic industries for foreign companies. Oh, yeah, sure. Definitely. Absolutely. I think there's nothing wrong with, with saying, like, hey, we need to protect ourselves first before anybody else. Um, the only social responsibility of a company should be to deliver a profit to its shareholders. It's fucking stupid. <laughs> it's not for the courtesy, but that's ridiculous. 
you know, no, of course not. I mean, well, socially, uh, I don't, this is actually a good question. Because if, if I put this in context, I can make the argument that, like, no, it's a company's job to make as much money as possible. The government should be kind of wrapping them in a little bit more of a social program. But again, like, I, I work for a company that I feel very, very heartless. I've lost uh, benefits as I've been there for no other reason than it keeps them having more money. And, like, so I do disagree on this. The rich are too highly taxed. No, we have an issue of, of, correct, of correctly taxing them. Um, you know, some kind of, not necessarily maybe a wealth tax or maybe some kind of taxing on the ability to give out stocks uh, is necessary, but something needs to be done. There, you know, I believe it's something like 1% of the population in the United States owns 90% of the wealth. It's insane. We have 10% split between the lower and the middle class, and that's going down. So, you know, obviously, you know, there's some kind of an issue there. Uh, and like, I mean, just on face value, this would be the issue. If the rich are not taxed enough, anything. Those with the ability to pay should have access to higher saying, Oh, yeah, 100%. Absolutely. I think that we as a society need to come to an agreement on what is a good standard of care for people who can't afford health care. But if you are somebody who contributes to society more, uh, just on principle, you should have access to better things. If you're a bigger contributor, you should be valued more in society. There's no, there's no incentive for somebody to do more for society if they're going to be valued at the same rate as somebody who either doesn't or can't contribute in the same way. But that doesn't mean that our standard of care should be low. It just means that we should have a particular standard, and then you should get more if you have more money. Government should penalize businesses that mislead the public. Yeah, sure. I don't. I, but I don't really. Yeah, sure. I mean, all right. A genuine free market restrict requires restrictions on the ability of creditor multinationals to create monopolies. I mean, sure. I mean, it's not a genuine free. I mean, what a genuine in what sense? Like a yeah, pure free market? No, no. But like in the sense of like a nice free market? Sure, I guess. We're only on page three. Holy farts. Abortion, when the woman's life is not threatened, should always be legal. <sighs> yeah, I agree. I mean, my, my opinion on abortion, um, I believe I'm, I'm pro-choice. I understand the pro-life argument. I think a society can sustain itself either way. My argument overall, and I'm not going to get too into it right now, but if you guys would like me to expand upon it, I will another day. But generally speaking, um, there needs to be some form of population control. And um, what what's better to control the population than to say, like, it's before the baby's born and also to say, like, you have a choice in whether or not you want to, uh, you know, have an abortion now. I know it's silly. I know it's sad to say, but we are living in a society where, um, you know, basically, you know, it's just a tough call. It's, it, from a perspective of, pro of promoting society to its fullest, I don't see a way that we can continuously inflate our population and sustain ourselves in a way that's actually in a way that's like safe and happy for the majority of people and authority should be questioned yeah like you should always question authority let me just tell you something like for the most part if you if you grew up in a middle class school you were trained in a way where you're not meant to understand what you're learning um, and particularly by in, in a math perspective you know you'll learn math you'll learn how to do something but you won't really learn why and i know it sounds silly but you're bred to not really question things or question authority you should always question authority there's nothing positive comes from um you know pretending like everybody else is better than you just because they have a little bit of power an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth sure yeah i'm vindictive so <laughs> why not taxpayers should not be Expected to prop up any theaters or museums that cannot survive on a commercial basis. <laughs> this is a tough one. And the only reason that I think it's tough is because you can make an argument that, like, uh, theaters and museums... I look at theaters and museums as more of, like, a classical history type of perspective. And I think those things have very heavily bolstered us uh, as, we've gone through, as we've gone through society. Especially now, if we're talking about dismantling uh, statues and, and taking them down, a museum would be where I would want to put them to. Uh, so I think I disagree with this one. Not strongly. It's a bit difficult, but I'm going to say I disagree. School should not make any classroom attendance compul. What does what compulsory mean? Look at that. Pop is not very smart. Uh, oh, they make it. It's required by law. I disagree with that. I don't understand. Like in what context? Are we talking about? Are we talking about high school? Like going to school is going to make you better. Like I don't. Like, what does that mean? You should be required to go to school. Sure. I don't. I mean, I'm assuming we're talking about like K through 12. And you should we should be you know advocating for for the intel like you know the bolstering of intelligence for people in our society. Uh, all people have their rights, but it is better if uh, all of us that different sorts of people should keep to their own kinds. No, that's stupid. 
that goes against the fundamentals of what America is. This is purely tribalist and in, in all nature. I mean, this is an, this is like this is like, hey, are you a racist? Like, listen, you know, I understand the wantingness to stick to your own kind, but the absolute, you know, and I get it. It's more comfortable. And I'm not saying that like you should necessarily go against that, but why, why, why? You know, shame somebody into it. You know what I mean? Like, it's this is more of the idea of like, you know, we should be mixing with each other. Um, we shouldn't be leaving purely. I understand comfort, but no, this is silly. Good parents sometimes have to spank. Yeah, what kind of a question is that? <laughs> it's natural for children to keep some secrets from their parents. I agree to an extent. I think part of growing up is keeping some secrets from your parents. But the secrets, you know, some secrets in the case of like small little baby secrets, I get it. Possessing marijuana for personal use should not be a criminal. Like, yeah, I strongly agree. That. I mean, I think marijuana has like a lot of medicinal benefits. Um, so, you know, it seems silly. The prime function of school schooling should be to equip the future. Yeah, that's a future gener uh, generation to find jobs. Yes, and it's failing emphatically with that right now. They're not pushing people towards jobs that we need. They're pushing people towards them, uh, just doing whatever you want so you figure it out. I understand the idea of freedom of choice, but there's nothing wrong with telling a child like, hey, listen, if you don't have a passion, you don't know what you want to do, here are some great jobs that will allow you to work and, and have a good amount of money in the future because they're not easily automated and they're necessary to society. Uh, people with serious inheritable dis disabilities should not be allowed to reproduce. Oh, ha! this is a tough question. This is a eugenics question. People with serious inheritable disabilities should not be allowed to reproduce. What are we defining as serious? I think that if you can't, it's tough. Like if you have like an autoimmune disease, like whatever, I don't really care, but like, you know, how valuable from a societal perspective is somebody that has severe autism or has Down syndrome? Um, and it's such, this is such like a hard one, you know, but like what, it, you know, if we know what the result's going to be, is like something that like, uh, if it's an incredibly high rate of horrible quality of life and they're a pure drain on the system, we could be reallocating those resources to other things. And, you know, I, I just, I agree, maybe not strongly, but like, I agree. I honestly do agree. The most important thing for uh, children to learn is to accept discipline. I mean, the most important, this is such a stupid question. The most important, it's important to children to learn to accept discipline. I'm going to agree because of that. And I do think that kids nowadays are a bunch of like spoiled little shits, at least some of them. But like, this isn't the most important thing. I don't know. I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. There are no savage and uh, and civilized peoples. There are only different cultures. What the heck? What kind of a question is this? There are no savage and civilized peoples. No, I disagree with that. There are cultures that are centralized more around. I mean, savagery is like that's a very intense, strong word. But there are cultures that are better and worse when you look at it from the perspective of the quality of life of people. So, like, this is kind of wrong. Those who are able to work and refuse that opportunity should not expect. To, oh, yeah, I, I I agree with that. I think it's ridiculous. If you can work, um, you should work. You should be supporting society. Why do you want to be in a position of laziness? Like that to me is just so pathetic. You should be working and you should be contributing to society if you can, just on principle. When you are troubled, it's better not to think about it, but to keep busy with more cheerful things. I disagree with that. I mean, this is a, this is a question of mental health. Like you should be focusing on your mental health. You shouldn't just be ignoring things. There are some instances where you need to fight through the pain but like on, a, on just like a fundamental level like you should be trying to manage your, your demons so to speak first generation immigrants can never be fully integrated with their new country my question here is i'm assuming first generation is like that's like the generation after their migrated parents right so i disagree with that um i think that first year migrants probably can never fully be integrated with their country first generation though yeah maybe i think so you know uh, what's good for the most successful corporations is always ultimately good for us. Get the, get the hell out of here. <laughs> well, what? No. Like, this isn't even ever a, this is stupid. This isn't even a conservative versus liberal or progressive argument. This is just ridiculous. You know, that's our biggest issue right now is pandering to corporations. Both sides of the aisle are doing it. It's insane. No broadcasting institution, however independent its content, should receive public funding. I, I, funding, I disagree. Um, I understand the idea of this, but the problem is, is right now, the only reason people are watching Fox News and CNN and MSNBC is because they're entertaining and divisive. So if we let places, things like NPR and PBS fall, 
and not give them funding, then they're either going to completely phase out of existence or they're going to have to provide entertainment news solely for the uh, benefit of staying alive. So no, you should have independent funding for, for public for, or funding for, for public broadcasting. Four out of six. Let's see. Our civil liberties are being excessively curbed in the name of counterterrorism. Uh, hey, we got some new emotes. <laughs> very good, very good. Oh, uh, sorry, I, I just tried to try. This is a good question. I don't really know if this is true or not. I think I agree with that. I think I could agree with that. A uh, significant advantage of a one-party state is that it avoids all the arguments and the, yeah, that's a great. That's a that is a significant advantage of a one-party state is that it avoids all arguments that delay process of the democratic political system, and also that's called a dictatorship. So you know, silly wording. That's ridiculous. Although the electronic age makes official surveillance easier, only wrongdoers need to be worried. <sighs> Kind of, maybe, but also, like, it's an infringement on you to, to, to spy on somebody who's not doing anything wrong. It's just a tough one. I mean, I agree in the idea that, like, if you're not doing anything wrong, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't care. But if you really complicate the issue and you add, like, levels of, like, police brutality in there and, like, just, like, the authoritative, uh, you know, perspectives of police officers, like, you can make an argument that this is ridiculous because people can find things. I'm going to agree. Mm, I'm going to disagree. I'm going to disagree with that. The death penalty should be an option for the most serious crime. Sure, honestly, I think that if you are, if you've done something so wrong that you can never be rehabilitated, like there's really no point in of us uh, sustaining your life. And I know people say, well, it costs more to kill somebody. Well, yeah, it's because of how long it takes for us to pull the trigger. I would say that generally speaking, though, our, our prison uh, system is completely flawed. It exists to put people in a hole and not have them come out better off. And rather, I mean, rather than actually going in and and you know having people. Uh, become trained to, to fit into society better. Generally speaking, I think the recidivism rate is like 70%, which means like more than three quarters of people who go to jail at one time are going to go back again. Um, so in a civilized society, one must always have people above to be obeyed and people below to be in command. Oh, this is so yucky the way that they word this. Because my interpretation is like in a civilized society, you need some kind of a class structure that comes from people who contribute more contributing more. So obviously, if somebody has the ability and the capacity and actually has the training to do so, and they're they're uh, contributing more to society, they should have say over somebody who's leeching off the system. So like, yeah, this needs to be a thing, but the way it's worded is so authoritative and like so kind of like just like it's telling people that and it's, it's almost shaming you into it. I'm going to agree with it. Abstract art that doesn't represent anything should be should be considered art at all. I don't know. Who cares? I disagree. I guess I don't care about art. Like I, it's an interpretation thing. Um, in criminal justice, punishment should be more important than rehabilitation. No, I just talked about that. That's ridiculous. 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 We should be talking about rehabilitation. If somebody goes to jail because they're selling marijuana, like, or let's say something harder because marijuana shouldn't be illegal. They're selling, like, cocaine. Like, they should be given, like, hey, we need to figure out how to get you to contribute society better. It's more complicated than that, but, you know. Um, it is a waste of time trying to rehabilitate some criminals. Yeah, sure. There are people who are just beyond help. Uh, there's absolutely. Uh, the business person and the manufacturer are more important than the writer and the artist. See, this is another one of those questions because I do agree with that. All four of those things are necessary. Um, but when you kind of break these down, and I know this is going to be a little weird for some of you guys, but when you look at a business person and a manufacturer, I interpret that as somebody who's pushing forward from a technological perspective. That is a more of a masculine trait. While you look at something like a writer and an artist being a more feminine trait. I'm not saying that men aren't artists or women aren't business people. My point to say is that we don't value femininity in our society enough, like things that are uh, writing-oriented and art-oriented and, and of expression-oriented. But that doesn't mean that, on principle, I don't agree that, you know, more traditionally masculine things like technological advancement and, and infrastructure shouldn't be valued more. But this is one of those ones where it's like it's hard to agree or disagree because you can make an argument to disagreement. I just believe in a more of an emphasis on technology, but there still should be a heavy, solid emph emphasis on, like, you know, uh, compassion. I guess you could really boil it down to. Mothers may have careers, but it's their first duty to be homemakers. Like, shut, what? No. I mean, like, I believe in, in men and women contributing equally depending on what their role is. If a woman decides to stay home and a man decides to work, then the woman should take care of the kid. If it's flipped around, then the man should take care of the kid. So no, I don't believe that. Is there definitely a maternal instinct where women 
may want to focus more on taking care of kids, sure. But that's not that's a that's a social thing. That's a social contract between two people and, and a biological thing. But from a government perspective or from like a societal perspective, um, no, of course not. Multinational companies are unethically exploiting the plant genetic resources of developing countries. <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah, yes. I mean, I, that's like not even like a question. Definitely. I mean, we like we effectively just we take so much like well, like the whole blood diamond thing is insane. I mean, like you could make the argument that like you know these places would be richer if they actually had control over their own stuff. Making peace with the establishment is an important aspect of maturity. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, but also this is a stupid question because this this is on like a perfect world where like yeah society isn't going to be perfect, so you kind of have to learn to suck it up and deal with it. But like that, this the, the subtext here is like, hey, you shouldn't fight against the current establishment. But like, there are things that are that are flawed in our current society, and this is saying like, don't worry about those flaws. It's okay. But like, on a fundamental level, I agree with this. But on like a, a, a on a contextualized level, like don't. But I'm going to agree with it on a fundamental level. Um, let's see if I was like, astrology accurately explains many things. Does it? Astrology. Wait, is am I thinking of astro? Is astrology like? Bullshit astrological science, or am I thinking of astronomy? Oh, <laughs> shut the hell up. Shut the heck up. Get out of here. You cannot be moral without being religious. Am I reading this right? You cannot be moral. Yeah, no, I, I, I disagree. Here's the thing with morality when it comes to religion. I actually think that religion is a great epicenter for morality. I think, obviously, that, like, you know, religions are a little bit older than this 50 years ago or so are, are very demonizing of people that are different. But uh, fundamentally speaking, it gave everybody a narrative and a direction to move towards. I don't think that society is having an issue with their morals because religion is fading away as a moral focal point. I think it's having an issue because we haven't understood how impactful religion has been in a positive presence or in a positive sense, and we haven't figured out an alternative. And my alternative to religion is society, looking at what's best for society, for the collective rather than for the individual. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't be personally selfish to some extent, but from a collective... Uh, perspective you should be focused on what what lets us outlive the sun what lets society move forward technologically to a point where we don't need the sun i know it's insane but that's that's what i look at more than anything else when the sun goes out we we will die so how do we outlive that how do we outlive the complete loss of our the biggest energy provider and source that's what we need to figure out Charity is better than social security as means of helping. No, this is stupid. No, and like I understand people are like, well, no, you should use charity. Like you, yeah, you should have the disposable income to do what you want with your money. But to say charity is better, like, like generally speaking, the government should have does usually, and it fuck it messes up in a lot of senses. But government usually has a better, uh, it should have a better perspective on how to use monies rather than. Um, charity, you know what I mean? Like, we all just dumped money into, I don't know, toys for tots? It's nice that the kids have stuff, but what about the, the charity that gives the kids food, you know? I know it's silly to think of it like that, but that's the truth. Some people are naturally unlucky. I don't really know. I just kind of disagree. I think that, like, maybe some people are naturally um, in inferior not in a sense where they should die or anything, but there are people who are better and worse than other people. I, I think that there's also a level of truth to the amount of hard work people will put into things. So I think that, like, you know, chalking everything up to luck seems a little silly to me, but, you know, I, I just disagree with this. It is important to that, uh, it's important that my child's school instills religious values. I disagree with that. Um, you know, that's your, up to you, especially nowadays where we're shifting. <sighs> Finally, on the sixth page, oh, we're looking at bad boy words, guys. We're looking at the. A little sexy times. Sex outside of marriage is usually immoral. I'm gonna. I know. I know what the word immoral means, but I want to like look at the dictionary definition because. Well, that didn't help. I disagree, but I can understand why you would disagree with that. Like it, it could be considered immoral. I don't really know that I believe in the institution of marriage. You know, I, I mean, I'm I'm all for you know plugging in while you're early and, and feeling yourself out. So. Uh, a same-sex couple is stable in a stable, loving relationship should not be excluded from the possession. Yeah, like of course. Why? Why? Why would you? Like, I mean, it's silly. If they, if literally, if, if they're a stable, loving relationship, that's more. That's more important. I want you guys to understand. That's more important 
than having a mother and a father. See, the thing is, is that like there, are, we have a generation of men that are very angry, and women too, uh, because of the lack of a father. But it's not the lack of the father; it's the lack of the secondary parental figure, um, and also the idea that that particular more than anything else, the anger comes from the idea that that person didn't want you. It doesn't come from the lack of a male or a female figure. It comes from the lack of not being wanted by the parent. That's where the anger comes from. And so, like, we need to understand that before we move forward. So, like, no. Uh, no, they shouldn't be excluded. Pornography depicting consensual, uh, consensual assault should be legal for the... Yeah, yes, but, like, this is tough because a lot of times... There are cases where it's not consensual. And also... You know, my thing with pornography and why it's pornography fine, this is fine, but like, you know, if we get deeper into this with sex work, the reason I don't think sex work should be legal is because of the idea that, um, you know, it's, it seems to be an alternative for people. It's like, well, we are in an economic crisis, so you should be able to sell your body, but you're literally, literally objectifying yourself and you're selling your, uh, your morals uh, to make a quick buck because you don't have any other economic opportunity. And so, like, it's a little silly. Um, what goes on in the private bedroom between consenting adults is not a business to say, yeah, sure, I don't care. As long as, it's not, as long as it's nothing terrible, you know, like beating somebody to death. No one can feel naturally homosexual. I don't, who cares? Like, who, I, why, why, why am I so concerned with wh whose wiggler goes and whose, you know, whose uh, brown hole, you know? Who cares? These days, openness about sex has gone too far. Uh, mm, yeah, yeah, it's all over TikTok. You. I don't know why I need to know your fetishes, and I don't know why things like the LGBT uh, parades should be so hypersexualized. It's not being being gay or trans has absolutely nothing to do with how kinky you are. Why is it a mainstay in some of these rallies? Honestly, I think it's incredibly disrespectful to uh, the history and the here the LGBT heroes who fought to be you know uh, considered you know equal and free. Uh, so yeah, I strongly agree. I know I brought it to LGBT. I'm sorry for that, but let's just see where I stand. All right, guys. I, I, we get it. Where's my? Where's mine? I don't care. I don't care about Gandhi. All right, guys. Here it is. Let's. Here's mine. I think this is mine, right? Is this my chart? Is this it? How do I zoom in? This is my chart, guys. This is where I stand. All right. Um, this is where I stand. So, there we go. This is what you guys have been waiting for. This is it. Now I get to come off of TikTok. I'm done. I'm done with politics. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is where I stand. I'm a bit uh, left, and I guess a little bit uh, libertarian, I guess. Uh, you know, who knows? I think we all knew I, I, I dragged to the left. Blah, pop is a libertarian. All right, guys. So now that we did that, 